Good morning, day 242. Oh, man, I had to, y'all, I should show you. Well, first, let's take a look outside. We are outside. It's a rainy day here. I've read John chapters um, 10, 11, and 12 today, but we're going to camp on chapter 11. And y'all, let here, let me show you. <laughs> I'm going to do my best. I've got pages, pages of notes, I tell you. And because this is a dense book and or chapter. <laughs> I mean, sound like a broken record. Yes, it is. It's a dense book. It's every sentence is dense. But this is so chapter 11 and in my translation, the New Living Translation is titled The Raising of Lazarus. And I have heard this story so many times. Many people have. Lazarus is a famous name. We, I often, um, you know, this is the one time, one of, or one of maybe just a couple of times in Scripture that we're told that Jesus wept um, because he loved his friend so much. At least that's the version that I've heard. And I'm telling you, that's not the version I read, <laughs> or that is not what I got out of it. And so stick with me, because I had to even stick with myself. I'm like, man, is this, can this be right? Um, but I don't know if there is a right or a wrong way to interpret <coughs> scripture is when you meditate on it and it speaks to you. So what it spoke to me about in general was heartbreak. And maybe he also was heartbroken over the death of his friend Lazarus, but I think there's a lot more to that story. And that heartbreak is in and of itself a really complicated and real human experience. Um... And, <laughs> whew, all right, so where to even start here? Well, let's just, like, give a recap of the story and the, you know, the chronological events. So, we are told that Lazarus is sick. Lazarus is the brother of Martha and Mary. Lazarus, or Jesus, is at another location. They send messengers to tell Jesus, hey, your friend is sick. You should probably come. And they sent for him knowing that he could probably heal Lazarus. But Jesus knows that there's another plan and that there's another, you know, something else that's going to unfold. And so he actually, and, and for God's glory. So another miracle, um, he intentionally waits a couple of days knowing that Lazarus will die or fall asleep and that he is going to have the opportunity to um, do a really big miracle. But in the meantime, at least to everybody's understanding, Lazarus does die. When they do make the decision to go uh, back, um, they were worried about Jesus getting hurt because he is wanted. They're also what's going on in the background here is that the Pharisees have had, and the leaders have had enough of Jesus. <laughs> and they have plans to arrest him, to hurt him, to possibly kill him. And so his disciples are worried that he is going to get stoned. Um, and Jesus replies, there's 12 hours in every day of daylight. And people can walk safely. And they see because they have the light of this world. He's talking about himself here as well. But at night, there's danger of stumbling because they have no light. And then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will now go and wake him up. So I think what he's alluding here, too, is even heartbreak also. And how heartbreak can cause humans to feel like they are in darkness. And when we feel like we're in darkness, 
that is when we have an opportunity to stumble because we have l blocked the light. Heartbreak blocks, blocks a lot of things because the pain, the feelings are so overwhelming that, um, you know, hope disappears, sadness, it's all consuming, overwhelming, overcoming. Um, but anyway, so I think all of this is like foreshadowing. Um, Jesus, I think this is all a foreshadowing of his own death and resurrection. Um, and the fact that Mary and Martha um, were even to told at the very beginning, we get a foreshadowing that Mary, oh, Mary's the one that we're going to tell you about who, d who pours perfume on Jesus' feet. Like, why do we need to know that now? Again, it's a, there's a theme of foreshadowing going on here. Um, and so we really need to pay attention um, because we're getting clues of what's coming before it's coming. So he told them plainly, yep, they didn't understand. So he's like, oh, yep, Lazarus is dead. So I'm about to, um, I'm, I'm glad this happened while I wasn't there because uh, now people will really believe. They're really going to believe. Uh, so let's go. And so they start on their journey and they arrive Martha meets him out like he, Jesus doesn't come right to the house. He stays out at a safe distance. Um, so Martha goes and is, she greets Jesus with a, hey, if you had been here, this wouldn't have happened. And Jesus has a conversation with him and just says, don't worry, your brother's going to rise again. And she says, oh, yeah, I know when everybody else does, we'll all rise again. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection. So he goes to present tense. I am the resurrection. Anyone who believes in me will live after dying. Anyone, everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe, Martha? And she says, yes, I've always believed. She goes back to past tense, um, that you are the Messiah, the one who has come from the world. And then she leaves, goes back into the house to Mary. And then she says, oh, teacher wants to see you. We're not actually told that, but evidently it happened. So Mary goes, and she goes so quickly that everybody who's in the house, and they're all mourning and grieving and wailing, um, they take notice of this, and they're like, oh, hey, she must be going to the grave. So let's follow her and go with her. Um, and when Jesus, so she goes to Jesus, falls at his feet. She says the same thing Martha does. Lord, only if you, if you had only been here, my brother would, it would not have died. And then Jesus saw her weeping and wailing and everybody else deep. And he was deeply troubled. So I think he even becomes heartbroken and not only because of, he sees their heartbreak, he's human, he's affected by their heartbreak, but also because he knows, oh gosh, this is what's going to happen when this happens to me. When they're faced with my death, this is, this is what's going to happen. They're not, they're not going to be able to believe. They can't believe it now, even when I'm here. I've arrived on the scene, I'm telling them. I'm going to be work a miracle here and they can't believe it even though I'm here and I'm saying it and I've been foreshadowing it. I've been telling them that I will not even though I will appear to die, I won't really die and he is seeing that they cannot they in their humanness they will not be able to comprehend this. They will not be able to believe even though He's been telling them, he's been giving them evidence, he's been proving it. So I think he's heartbroken, but he understands fully the humanity. Because we're told that he was angry, deeply troubled and angry. Um, and it says deep anger welled within him and he was deeply troubled. And then he's like, okay. 
where have you put him? But he he's able to move through. So I think this is even a clue to us. Like, keep moving. Even when you're heartbroken, even when it doesn't make sense, even when it's dark and you're stumbling and you can't see, you can't comprehend, it feels hopeless. Um, you know, all of the feelings that come up for us. He's identifying with what heartbreak is. It's anger. It's sorrow. It is... Um, it's painful, and yet it must be a necessary uh, part, you know, to travel through this darkness. You often hear people call the dark night of the soul, like through the darkness to be able to get to the other side, the glory uh, that we can only understand true glory when we've been into the depths of these emotions. And I think even Jesus in his humanity is even experiencing this himself at a level that we don't really uh, get to glimpse. We're going to glimpse it again in the Garden of, of Gethsemane and when he's actually being crucified. But I think he is foreshadowing and even seeing, oh my gosh, they're not going to, they're going to believe I'm dead. And they're going to feel this pain again. Like if they feel this now with Lazarus, what are they're going to feel this even that much more intensely with um, when I die. But he moves through it. He does what he needs to do. He says, roll the stone over. Um, he says a prayer up to God, He's, and he says, even I'm saying this out loud so you can hear me, so you all will hear me and know, but he said, he thanks the Father for hearing him, and then he tells Jesus, he tells Lazarus, excuse me, to get up and walk out of the tomb, and Lazarus even comes out like a, like a, what we would consider like a zombie or a mummy wrapped in, in burial cloths, even his face is covered. And yet he's able to walk, even though he's in darkness, um, and come out into the light. Like they're so, y'all, when you read the, when you really sit and like read in between, um, and then it goes on, it, the stories go on, um, and I, I could go on and on, but I think that there, there's so much imagery and so much, and I think we need imagery to help us even understand our own emotions because we know what we feel, but we can't always articulate it. And and we almost feel as if we are dying along with when and there is a part of us that is. It's, you know, and even um a death of a relationship of a that give and take between you and that other human person, like that's not going to happen anymore. And we grieve that we're angry about it. We often try to bargain with death. Um, there are stages that we go through and it's real and we're not able to see beyond that. So even though we might have seen miracles, we hear it, we read it, when we're in this state of being, when we're in heartbreak, we're human. With the end of the day, we're human. And we can't, I just don't think we have the capability or the ability. And we have, but it's not a permanent state. And Jesus is even showing us that through his role modeling again. He's, he's allowing himself to feel it. And then he's moving through it. He's going on to the next stage of what he needs to do. And so we can roll, we can take hope and maybe comfort and know that uh, what feels like death, what feels like darkness, what feels like overwhelming feelings that will never end, they do. And we can move and part of how they end is that we move through them. Uh, we, we feel them fully. We express it. We allow even our, those living, those tears to move out of us, the emotions to move out of us. Um, 
and then we roll the stone and we can walk out even when we're still, you know, maybe have the, uh, the feeling of the effects of death still upon us, like the burial cloth, like Lazarus, um, we will move to new life uh, beyond experiencing this heartbreak. I don't know if I'm able, <laughs> this, this is hard. I was like, I don't have any idea, even with taking like pages of notes to, um, know that Jesus did, was able to experience this with us. And I think not only was he heartbroken for his friends at this time and through this experience, it was even more of a heartbreak of what was to come and that he couldn't prevent it for them. He couldn't prevent it for himself. Like he was kind of, I think, hit with the reality of, wow, this is going to be really hard for these people that I love, for all people, for, for all of us forever, every time we allow ourselves to love and get attached, um, we're inviting this type of experience. And at the and we humans don't like this. And often we will block love fully. We won't let ourselves fully attach. And even when children are harmed or have uh, trauma when they're young, they can learn how to put walls up and not, we're, this is how much we don't want to feel. <laughs> these things. We don't want to feel. It feels because it feels like we are dying and even a part of us is dying. And how can we go on? Um, and you hear a lot of people that are in mourning and it, it takes a long time to heal from this, but we will, we will, and we need to believe. That's when we've got to cling to belief that life does return um, and not only that, but it returns even more because when we are able to go to those extremes of sadness, anger, pain, over loss, that even amplifies what we will be able to feel, how more, much more deeply we will actually be able to love on the other side. And I think Jesus himself was experiencing that and knowing, but he was also at the same time heartbreak, heartbroken at the reality of the human experience. Um, but we have hope and we can believe. So ultimately it is a heartwarming message, but heartbreak is real. It's re it is so real. Um, but we should not stop ourselves from loving fully. We should even embrace it to a certain extent because of the paradox, the law of paradox. When we allow ourselves to fully love and even invite this experience of heartbreak into our lives, our ability to love on the other side of that and experience joy and the appreciation of life and gratitude, all those positive feelings will also be able to go to that extreme. And people that block this or allow themselves to even stay stuck in the pain, um, they don't get this resurrection life. And, but that's a choice. He's telling us it's a choice. All right. I hope I've done this even a little bit of justice. This is, um, there's so much more, but we've got only today, we've got days and days to keep talking about this in years to unpack and not only just unpack intellectually, but now take and move into life and allow ourselves to take the risks of loving, take the risk of feeling pain, even unto death. 
um, so that we can experience the richness and fullness of life. Um, we just can't have one without the other. All right, so if you're in a heartbreak stage now and you're watching this, I hope that maybe you'll open to John chapter 11 and really meditate on it and know that um, Jesus allowed him to feel the same thing and that the human experience will be amplified on the other side of it. Um, and to allow yourself to really experience the fullness of what this human life has to offer and through the heart, not just intellectual. Allow yourself the full experience, the myster mystery and wonder of it all. All right, John chapter 11, rise and shine. Oh, and maybe go and console someone also um, in their heartbreak, with heartbreak, with empathy. All right. Bye, friends.